Hi everyone, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming at you with my first time making a quarterly reads video. I've only posted one recent reads video and obviously I've read more than what I talked about in that video. So I was like, you know what? I have to give in and do a quarterly recent reads. And eventually I'll get to the romance recent reads and the manga recent reads. But for this quarterly one, because I already know I talk an excessive amount, I'm just going for all the other genres, you know, outside of manga, outside of romance. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's jump right in. So the first book I'm going to be talking about and the first book I think that I finished this year was Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. This was a reread for me. I picked it up as an audiobook and mostly because I was just in the Anne of Green Gables mood. If any of you have been here for a while, y'all know that I am a stan of Anne with an E absolutely obsessed with that TV adaptation of Anne of Green Gables and I have wanted to continue the series so I reread this so that I could refresh my memory. Have I continued the series? Spoiler alert, no. But I will eventually, you know, it will happen. It will happen. But regardless, I don't know how any of you could not know what this is about, but in essence, it's about this redheaded girl who is an orphan. She gets mistakenly sent to the family of these like two farmers and it's about her growing up with these two farmers who are siblings. They're a sister and a brother. And yeah, it's about all her misadventures <laughs> in this, in Green Gables. So yeah, I think I gave this four stars. Am I lying? Am I making things up? So yeah, I gave this four stars. Obviously it was a reread, so clearly I enjoy the story. I just actually was reminded that this had much darker, darker tones than I remember. There were more sad moments than I anticipated, but in general, I really enjoyed the audiobook. I love Anne. I adore her with my whole heart. And so I just liked revisiting this story and yeah, let me just move on. The next book I read was A Such a Pretty Smile by Christy Demeter. So this is a horror novel where preteen or teen girls are being uh, kidnapped and gored by what seems to be an animal before they die. And so we follow two timelines. The current day timeline follows this a teenage girl as she is kind of like navigating all these grisly murders that are happening around her and also figuring out what to do about these very dark feelings that are simmering underneath the surface for her. And then in the other timeline, the one in the past, we follow that character's mother, I think before she marries the father of her daughter. And she is an artist and she is very mentally troubled and so she's just trying to navigate her life as an artist, as the fiance of someone, and it's a lot. Anyway, so I did not give this a rating and it was because this had too much going on in it. There were just too many threads the author was trying to pull and it she could not handle it. She could not handle all the threads she was trying to pull. So the main thing I liked about this book was the psychological horror component and the mix of art and horror. So when it comes to what is real, what isn't real, why are these women so angry and like almost being consumed by this malicious thing, thinking and wanting to hurt people, that element was phenomenal. Seeing both the daughter and the mother experience that was haunting, chilling, incredible. Again, if y'all have been here for a while, y'all know I love me some feral women. And so that, that aspect of this was hitting the mark for me a hundred percent. And then the other aspect, which part of me wishes this had just been a novel about the mother is the art and horror element because the mother 
starts like manifesting physically in her art the horror that is lingering in the back of her mind and it is just superb it is so disturbing and incredible some of the uh, sculptures that she creates when she's very disturbed I guess would be the word very upset it was phenomenal and then the exploration of her being in a relationship with another artist and the tensions there how her fiance is in essence jealous of her and her talent and all the things he does to undermine her and her feelings iconic but the reason this ended up not getting a rating was because the white feminism was getting on my nerves like literally the way that this was trying to criticize how like beautiful women are the focus of like news reports of like missing women and etc but then it doesn't actually try to talk about how it is black and brown women who disproportionately disappear don't have their cases solved and are murdered it, it was just like how can you claim to be a feminist novel and not be intersectional in 2022 in 2022 no no. And then there was the whole part where there were only like two, two characters of color in here, both of them black women, and both of them were there to serve the white women of the story. They were just there to support these women in this process of figuring out what was going on. It was just, no, no. So that's why this ended up without a rating because some parts of it were incredible, but other parts of it were like, why are you like this? And then there's a whole other component, which I didn't address too much in the summary and I don't want to address too much now, but let's just say that the ending, what was revealed, did not work for me. It did not do it for me. This needed to just pick a struggle. It needed to pick a struggle and stick to it, but it wanted to stick to like five, mm -mm. No. The next book that I read was The Downstairs Girl by Stacey Lee. This is a book set in the reconstruction period in the United States and we follow this I believe Chinese American girl who is just trying to survive society during this time period. She works as a hatter. She's very very talented and she runs into the challenge that her employer wants to fire her despite the fact that she is the reason the business is thriving and doing so well. And on top of that, she actually lives in the basement or like cellar, something like that, of this family of writers who have a printing press. They publish their own newspaper or like you know magazine something like that and she's afraid of being discovered so i gave this 3.5 stars overall my favorite thing about this is that i think it would make an excellent novel to use in the classroom because again as a teacher sometimes the teaching brain takes over when i'm reading and that happened with this one especially because reconstruction is really not taught that well in the united states and a perspective that often gets sidelined is the experience of Chinese Americans and just Asian people who immigrated to the United States during this time period. So I just would love to use this book in the classroom. Aside from that, personally, this wasn't my jam entirely. Part of it is because our protagonist goes through like different phases of skills that are like the focus like she's very talented at multiple things and like people can be like people really can be talented at multiple things but in a story i'm like please focus on one because we start with her as a hatter and then we go into her as a writer and then we go to her as a jockey and i'm like again 
pick a struggle, pick one. We cannot have them all. So that was kind of one of the things that made me like not love this. The other thing was the romance. There was a little bit of a, it was cute. Like, don't get me wrong. It was cute, but like the protagonist knew more about the love interest than the love interest knew about her for because of reasons that I will not elaborate right now, but it just meant that I thought the relationship was a bit uncomfortable because of that. But anyway, in general, I would still definitely recommend this. Again, I there were a lot of things to appreciate and enjoy about this. It just didn't perfectly meet my tastes, but as a teacher, I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. The next book I read was Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones. So this is a novella. So in this one we follow either he's a preteen or he's just a pubescent boy. I can't remember his age anymore. But we follow him as he first encounters the ghost of his father and he's trying to figure out what the goals of the ghost are and kind of like determine like is this ghost here to help us or not so i gave this one four stars i read it with the haunted corner book club i will link our live show up above in the cards you will get more of my thoughts of this in there but overall i really 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 enjoyed this i think i was a co-host that enjoyed this the most I see its flaws. I definitely think that the ending was rushed, could have been, you know, developed far more. But overall, I enjoyed this even though it was confusing, even though there was like a lot going on, mostly because I think that it delves into the psyche of its protagonist really, really well. And it kind of both holds you at a distance while at the same time pulling you in really really close to the, this character and I just found that fascinating and the other thing I enjoyed about this was that once the horror parts really started kicking in they were iconic they really worked for me I thought they were amazing I was just like on the edge of my seat turning the pages needing to know what would happen next I just I loved, loved, loved the horror elements. As someone who has read Stephen Graham Jones before, those are my favorite bits. Like once he decides to let the other shoe drop, he just does it for me. He just, he delivers. He delivers the horror goods and I'm just so thankful. The next book I'm going to be talking about is When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nevo. This is the second book in the Singing Hills Cycle series and this is a novella series. In the first one we follow this, are they a monk? They're kind of like a monk historian type and they are collecting stories and we in essence follow them as they meet certain important figures or notable figures and you know learn about their pasts and what happened in their lives and do you know write that down to share with other historians and kind of compare stories as they are collected across time and space. So I gave this sequel four stars. I thought it was really, really good. It started kind of rough. I kind of wasn't super into it in the beginning, but eventually Nevo's writing just pulled me in, captured me, and just really made me settle into this story and feel like I was immersed in it. So one of the wonderful things about Nevo's writing is that this novella literally tells the same story twice and yet the difference in the details and the difference in what is focused on and the difference between how certain events are perceived are established so well that you were never bored. It always felt interesting and you were immediately wanting to compare what the differences were and what those differences meant. And so I just loved that this novella explored the concept of how different people, different cultures interpret events differently and 
what they value about a certain event differs based on culture, based on the person as well. And so I thought it was just explored superbly in this novella. And I cannot wait to continue reading the novellas in this series because Ni Vo truly knows how to write a spectacular novella. The next book I finished, I'm only going to be briefly mentioning because I will be going more into detail about it once I have read all my five star predictions is A Psalm for the Wild Belt by Becky Chambers. In this one, we follow a monk who is kind of disenchanted with life and doesn't know why. And so they go on this path of trying to figure out like, what is it about my life that makes it so that I'm kind of like feel like I'm floating and not doing enough and not happy, not really, really happy. And in that process, they meet a robot and they start forming a kind of friendship. It starts a little bit as, you know, kind of frenemies situation, a little bit. Anyway, so in this channel, we stand Becky Chambers if you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> but interpret that as you will. In general, what I will say is that this did for me what I needed it to do in the moment. It really was exactly the book I needed to read in the moments that I read it. And so I thoroughly appreciate it for that. The next book I'm going to be talking about is The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. In this book, we follow this teenager who can see ghosts and he starts being haunted by the ghost of a school shooter. And so he's in essence tasked with figuring out how to get rid of this malicious spirit. So I rated this three stars. I will not be going too deeply into it in this video because there is a live show with the Haunted Corner because this was the February pick for Haunted Corner. So just click on that above if you want more specifics. In general, my favorite thing about this was the queerness. The characters were so queer. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm in love. Like literally just the queer energy in this book was impeccable and we love to see it. Aside from that, part of my struggle with this book was that I wanted to love and adore our main character, but he was so closed up that we really didn't get to know him as well as I would have liked and so I wasn't as invested in him. Meanwhile, I was invested in the freaking school shooter because we did get to know him more deeply. We get, did get more insights into his mind, into his feelings and so his narrative was more interesting and I was mad. I was mad because I wanted to be compelled by our main character, by the story of our main character, by Jake's story, but it just did not happen. And then something else that just didn't work for me here was the world building. It was just, it didn't make sense to me. I'm going to be really, really honest. It did not make sense to me. I could not picture what was happening in the action sequences. I did not really understand the ghost realm. I think it had a different name in the book, but regardless, let's call it that. I didn't really understand the ghost realms, how it worked. And I was just confused through many of the scenes. And then the confrontations between the main character, Jake, and the malicious ghost Sawyer it was just so repetitive it was so repetitive and each time you ne you didn't quite understand if Jake had successfully defeated Sawyer or not and it was just like what is happening but anyway regardless I gave this three stars because I did think there were elements that were enjoyable again the queerness and again Sawyer was an interesting and compelling character so I was brought in by that and then third third is my baby boy Alistair. He was iconic. 
He was wonderful. He was a delight. Truly, as a love interest, I wanted more of him. As a romance reader, I was like, okay, I'm not really vibing with the action sequences and tension between Sawyer and Jake. So, so give me, give me the romance. <laughs> give me, give me the romantic interactions between Jake and Alistair. So, baby boy was truly amazing and lovely. So, in on this channel, we stand Alistair. Okay he was doing the most for this book. So yeah, that's really everything I have to say about this book, especially if I just want to hit the greatest hits, which I do. That's really it. So, you know, let's move on to the last book of this video. So that is Near the Bone by Christina Henry. In this one, we follow this woman who lives in this like remote cabin in the woods with her husband. And she doesn't really interact with people. She's only there with her husband and that's it. And one day she finds, I think it's the body of a fox mutilated and close to it some like prints in the snow that are too big to be a bear. But what else could it be if it's not a bear? And so we follow her as she's trying to figure out, is there a monster out there? What's going on? And while she's slowly learning and understanding that her relationship with her husband is kind of messed up, it's kind of suspicious. So I give this book four stars. Hopefully by the time that I post this, the Haunted Corner will have had our live show for this book, so I will leave that up above in the cards if that is the case. And I will also keep this with, you know, minimal commentary because I should be able to elaborate in that live show, so I don't want to repeat myself. But in general, I really, really enjoyed this. I found this incredibly gripping. Like I mentioned in the Discord chats though, which again, if you want to join the Haunted Corner, all of that is linked down below so you can join us and read some horror books with us. Anyway, as I mentioned, I mostly forgot most of this book, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I don't think it's memorable, but I think it does what it should in the moment, which is like, keep you turning the pages or in my case listening to the audiobook and obsessively wanting to go back to the story and wanting to know what happens next that is done so well in this book that I could not help but give it four stars I could not give it less than four stars because I was gripped I was in it I was there trying to figure everything out and the only reason this didn't get five stars well there's two reasons, one of them being that it's not memorable and the other one being that the ending was, no, the ending was unsatisfying. Like that ending, why? 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 It could have been so much better. But regardless, I enjoyed my time with this. I am really looking forward to the live show with my co-hosts to talk about it further and to, you know, jog my memory since I read this early in March, which was a bad choice because then I forget everything in time for the live show. But regardless, I'm pretty sure it will come back to me. It will come back to me. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, I will have the links to that down below in the description. Down there, you will also find other ways to support this channel and you'll find links to my book clubs that I'm a co-host of so that you can talk with me all things books. But yeah, I'll see you next time.